So this is JDevelopers 11.1.2.3 and we have an ADFS's application and first I run it in a browser this is the way the application basically looks um, you have a um, hierarchy viewer and a panel dashboard with some boxes in here and note that the sizing here doesn't actually fit exactly in the screen or actually it does, it stretches to fill out the screen but in the boxes here if you want to see the whole information you actually have to scroll like that the other thing to note here is that when I minimize this accordion, this area is basically stretching to fill out the screen. Okay, so this is basically um, a panel accordion with a hierarchy viewer in it that basically stretches to fill out the screen. So this is a stretch layout again with this area here. In terms of functionality, you can basically click your way through, pick up specific. Um, customers see the data in here in a graph and a nice um, gauge component and also a table and the other thing to note about table table in here has a scroll bar so you can actually scroll to see all the records of this customer like that so this is how the application looks like in um, a normal browser on your desktop so now let's switch and see how it looks like in your iPad so this is an iPad, we access the same application and you're going to see some adaptive behavior. So first of all, the look and feel of the application looks the same. One thing to note, we now have um, two boxes in each row instead of the three boxes. At the top we still have the hierarchy viewer and note that at the bottom part we don't have a scroll bar. Rather we're using a flow layout so we can use our fingers to scroll the page. The hierarchy viewer still works the same, we can um, expand it, note that we're using finger gestures to do the expanding of the nodes. And then we can click on uh, one of the customers to get the data. So again, this is calling the flow layout, clicking a uh, customer, getting the data to show up in this section. Again, we're not using a stretch layout here. Okay, so when we're actually collapsing that part of the page, Okay, we get an accordion that uh, scrolls up, but we're still in the flow layout. Okay. Graph behaves the same. You can highlight things. We have the table. One thing to note on the table below is we actually uh, the table switch to have pagination, which is a new capability. Okay, let's zoom in so you can see it. And we can basically scroll through sets of records. So that's instead of having a scroll bar for our table. Another thing we can do is we can take um, again components in our layout and drag and drop to reposition them okay this is again built-in functionality also supported on the iPad and last thing to note the table has multi-select behavior so in an iPad you don't actually have a mouse or a control button to do multi-select so you can actually just click on multiple records and we implement the multi-select for you Okay, back in the application, let's see how we actually achieve this um, transformation and adaptiveness of the application. So the application is only like we wrote it once, we don't need to rewrite it for a mobile device. Um, some of the aspects are taken care of automatically for us, for example, the hierarchy viewer that switches to be um, in HTML5 rendering versus Flash, uh, the table that automatically gets the pagination. Um, the one thing we did do here a little differently is the matter of using a flow layout versus a stretch layout. So again, on the laptop it's a stretch layout, on the mobile device it's a flow layout. And to achieve this we did um, one thing in the WebXML file. Okay, And if we actually look at the source code, you'll see here we added a parameter called, let's maximize this one, the parameter is called default dimensions, okay, and we set it to be auto, okay, auto. So uh, there are two values here, either auto or legacy, okay. Auto basically allows us to decide the type of layout that we want based on the top object in our page, okay. So now let's look at our page, okay, and let's again switch to the source view and look at the top. Uh, object here, the top layout object, which is a stretch layout. Okay, and what you can see here is the property for dimensions from, okay, which can be either parent, okay, 
children or author, right? And what we did here is we basically um, decided this based on whether we're using a touch screen or not. Okay, so if we're not using a touch screen, okay, we're using dimensions from parent. So basically the parent component, the panel stretch layout, decides how the layout is going to look like and therefore it stretches the layout. Otherwise, we're actually using auto and then we're using a flow layout in that case. Okay. There was one other place where we used this property called touch screen to modify our layout. Okay. And that's in the panel dashboard. What we did here is based on um, whether we're using a touch device or not, we set the number of boxes that we show to be either three or two. Okay. And this is why on the mobile device you see two boxes in the line and on the um, web browser you see three. So beyond those two changes we have the same user interface, same page that is being used and adjusts automatically to both um, a tablet and a, a desktop browser.